Hi there, this is uh, Sense 101.42.1, the wiring of premises, and this is Annex D, calculation of voltage drop, and I'll be covering some calculations according to question papers. In this Annex, we are calculating voltage drop for 230 volt and 400 volt AC systems. So the information that you're looking at is important and we will look, uh, see a little later why it is important. So just firstly, for single phase systems, 230 volt, 5% of 230 volts is 11.5 volts and 5% of 220 volts would be 11 volts. This is important because the 5% is for the voltage drop, the maximum allowable voltage drop. So simply voltage drop in single phase not to exceed 5% of 230 volts. So there we also have uh, 400 volts and you can see the information here 5% of 400 volts would be 20 volts and also that 5% of 380 would be equal to 19 volts. Now this is important information that we will use in some of our calculations almost every time when they ask for a reason uh, or substantiate your answer that this would actually come into play. Right, let's go with the first question. The question says there, a 16 millimeter square three core, 18 meter long armored copper cable feeds a single phase 60 amp dB from a municipal meter or kiosk. And that's uh, what we're looking at over there, the meter board or meter box. The dB, the main distribution board, feeds various circuits including a 4 kilowatt geyser that is 13 meters away from the dB and a 3 kilowatt electric pump that is applied from the top of the geyser isolator 20 meters from the isolator okay so there we have the actual geyser and we have a pump here most probably a circulating pump to help the flow of the water here so this is like a normal thing uh, not in your average um, single phase uh, domestic installations but yes it is a thing uh, it makes the water flow and the whole system more effective and efficient but yes there's also uh, another output or more energy used so it says here both loads use six millimeter square three core armored copper cable all cables are buried directly in the ground. Uh, some of this information will be important or usable and some would not be. It is now for us to see what we do with the information we need to calculate probably voltage dropped. So firstly, draw a neat label diagram to illustrate the given information. According to this paper, they gave you three marks to just draw this. And yes, uh, it could take probably one or two or three formats I could have drawn here another block and had the geysers information in here and another block here and I could, could have said 3 kilowatt pump, alright? But this is the drawing uh, in any two or three different formats. It would just mean the same thing. It's how you interpret it. It can't be wrong. Uh, the only time it's wrong is if, you know, you put the, the, the values on the wrong places and then you use it like that and your, your, your calculations would be um, incorrect or inaccurate. So the next part, this is only part one of question eight. Let's look at what they want further. Same question. Now they say, calculate the voltage drop, the total voltage drop from the meter kiosk to the pump when both loads are switched on. What do they want here for seven marks? All right, so we've, we've got a, a formula here that we use and there's probably another formula all of these are the same formula. This is what it can look like. You know, it's got different formats because I've got here uh, millivolt per amps per meter times I, which is current, times M. All right. Uh, so, and then of course we are dividing that by a thousand. Why do we divide it by a thousand? Because we must convert that millivolts into volts. And so we can just divide just this area by a thousand or the whole top section here by a thousand. And this is literally the same thing where 
what have I done here? I've put this in the brackets. I've said the, this is dividing by that, or I've said the uh, millivolt per amps per meter times I times my distance uh, times thousand uh, exponent negative for one. Okay, that means the same. This means that uh, I can all times it, but this is one over a thousand. So this is the other the, the different formats of just the same formula. Where do I get 2,8? Where do I get 60? Where do I get 18? And then of course I need to uh, divide uh, that value by a thousand to make this to get this answer into volts. So this comes, we need to look for the 2.8 on a table. Where is the table? What does the table look like? Here's the table. If you see here, I've got a millivolt per amp per meter. I've got, I've got also, uh, that's for DC. This is uh, on a wall and this is clip direct or on trace touching so it will be this year method one all right um let's just see if it's method three it is probably method three i tell you why because method three is cables are buried directly in the ground this you can find from the actual six and six but yeah i found my 2,8 there all right over here and i inject that into the formula i times it by current which is 60 amps which they give us and the meters here is 18 meters and then i divide all of that by a thousand i get 3,024 volts in short i can actually just say this is 3 volts if i wanted to round it off but i suppose i mean the four won't make the two a three and the three won't make the naught a one so that would just be three technically, but I can do this. I can I can put three uh, spaces after the decimal. Uh, let's see what the this is for load one. So meter board to dB. All right, that is that is that measurement there. All right. Now we're probably going to look at these measurements here. Maybe that one alone. And then if I wanted to measure the, I need both of these. Let's see what they do. So you can see here, we've used the 16 millimeters squared and we found a value 2.8. And there's my 60 amps, there's my meters. So furthermore, let's carry on to load two. Calculate the total voltage drop from the meter kiosk to the pump. It's still the same question when both loads are switched on. So we've done load 1, meter uh, kiosk to dB. And now we're doing the, the uh, volt drop at the dB, which means we are measuring uh, both the pump and the geyser. So firstly, we must uh, measure the or calculate the amps. We don't have the amps. We only have power. There's a formula that we're going to use. And this formula will come across, we will come across um, quite a bit. Um, whenever they don't give amps, you're probably going to have to use the power and the volts. So in this case, we have P equals V times I. We manipulate the formula, it becomes I equals P over V. I then take 7000 divided by 230 and I get 30,43 amps. That will be for the pump and the geyser together. All right, uh, I've got I use the same formula and then I inject in the uh, according to the table the value for millivolt per amp per meter uh, times current that I've calculated times the distance uh, divided by 1000 again. So let's see if I no, I didn't. Um, the table then if we use this table and we go to six millimeters squared because they tell us they're using for both loads six millimeters squared we go there to find our constant millivolt per amp per meter and we see that they're using 7,3 
and that's what we inject into this formula uh, over here 7,3 times 30,43 which is the amps times 13 meters to the DB uh, sorry to the geezer so at the geezer point we're also measuring the amps of the pump okay so we don't consider the, the meters of of the pump right so again divided by a thousand it gives us this under three volts uh, 2,9 or 2,88 volts load three we would have a similar scenario there's no current given but they do give power we use just the pump all right and then we divide that by 230 according to this formula once again manipulated and the current for the pump alone is 13,04 amps we inject then in there also the constant 7,3 because this is also 6 millimeter squared wire then we use the amps calculated times the distance 20 that's for the pump only because this is what we measure now at the geyser okay so here you can see VD geyser to pump so when we measure at the geyser we're not measuring the geyser's voltage drop we're measuring the voltage drop of the pump and therefore now we only use the distance of the pump with the pump's information all right um, it's like the it's like we we must look at it from a point of view where now the, the geyser becomes a supply point or a, a, a point of consumption for that load because it's supplying something else so we then have get, find an answer of 1,9 volts and we then say we actually get to the for seven marks they wanted the total voltage drop from the meter kiosk to the pump so we had to work out the voltage drop of every segment all right and then we say voltage drop at the meter kiosk equals vd1 plus vd2 plus vd3 so the sum of the three voltage drops we then take those three values that we've worked out 3,024 in the first load second load third load and it comes to 7,812 right so i say here 7,812 volt is within the 5% of 230 volts is it relevant no i just refer to it because uh, it's an observation i make all right is there anything after this let's see if there's another part to this question no so that was that question okay